Welcome to Dark Loops, The Lasso Crew, where we discuss season two of the Apple Plus series, Ted Lasso, now the Emmy award-winning series. Right? I'm your host, Dr. Scott Jordan, aka Zombie Scotty, cognitive psychologist, philosopher from Illinois State University. And tonight we discuss episode nine, Beard After Hours. So fellow crew members of the Lasso Crew, please say hello and tell the audience a little something about who you are. And we'll start with Tatsu. Yeah, PhD student at Northeastern University uh, in Boston. Also uh, work at a tech company in uh, customer success as well. And big time Liverpool fan. Go Reds. How about you, Sister A? <laughs> hey, uh, Sister A here. I'm also a Liverpool football club uh, supporter and from the great town of Boston. Um, I am a co-host of the Sister Speak Productions podcast, and I am ready to talk about this Coach Beard episode. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. And for the first time on the Lasso Crew, the one, the only Procrasta Nella Ella Ella. Procrasta Nella, please say hello to the audience and tell them a little something about who you are. Hello, Lasso Crew listeners. Uh, my name is Procrasta Nella. I am... Uh, an administrative support assistant and invention disclosure coordinator for tech licensing at the University of Florida. Yes, I'm from that state, but don't hold that against me. Um, I know uh, Scott and Sister A from the Sister Speak podcast, and I have had the immense pleasure to meet them both in person. I oh, recommend it highly to you all if you ever get the chance. Oh, and goodness. Even though she uh, kills me at uh, Game of Thrones Monopoly, I still love Sister A. I Did not kill you. you. <laughs> come on. She oh, come murdered on. and betrayed you. There was no <laughs> killing going on there. By the and way, did I'm you guys, very... did yeah, you guys see Shalita's post about doing shots of tequila? Yes. I said, where's the God Monopoly board? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Whenever we get together, the Sister Speak family, oh, definitely. something's going to happen. The North uh, remembers. <laughs> okay. So yeah, here's I'm very how we happy to be a part of your podcast. Thank you for having me. And oh, I'm we're totally here. glad to have you here. Yes. Pretty low key. Um, I ask everyone to come up with their favorite line, favorite character, favorite scene, favorite theme, and we just hash it out with each other. So I'm going to open the floor. Who wants to go first? Well, I guess I'll jump in. Um, yeah. I'm hoping, I mean, this was a very uh, unique episode, should I say? Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that um, Scotty can uh, fill me in on some of the things that might have gone completely oh, over my head. Um, <laughs> I think my favorite scene was towards the end when Coach Beard was hula hooping in the club. <laughs> I mean, that was at least a, a good laugh, and um, mm. I enjoyed uh, his shenanigans very much. So, so do you think that he learned how to hula hoop for the scene, or do you <laughs> think they added the scene because he knew how to hula hoop? He was good, whatever they did. I mean, I liked when he, he brought it up on his hand and stuff, so maybe I he mean, knows how to do it. He was a I dancing was fool. He was on beat. He was moving yeah. and the hula hoop. He was grooving. I thought, <laughs> okay, he did this already. And they said, let's put that in a scene. Yeah, yeah. I was very impressed. Loved by it. Action. I was like, okay, yeah. I haven't hula hooped in ages, but I'm like. Exactly. I thought it was CGI for a second, honestly. Because I was like. <laughs> he was doing the. CGI oh, yeah, hula hoop. Because <laughs> oh I thought God. you're supposed to move your hips, you know. It's been ages since I hula hooped. I'm like. He's good. He can just stand there and yeah, he wasn't good. moving his hips so much. He yeah. doesn't have any hips. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a dancing fool and he was, he was. good. I mean, he, he yeah. Was, he just let go. I mean, he just you could tell he enjoyed the scene, I think. I think he enjoyed oh, that scene. I I love that I love that scene because it's it's beard entering his element, right? Like he enters the room, he's, he's the first thing he does takes off his jacket he, mm -hmm. he just walks up to the dance floor he starts just like bumping and then the beat <laughs> drops and he's, yeah yeah just doing Excellent. it that was so good and of course she's there right of course she's there and, yes um, yeah i thought it was really really cool you know again i always enjoy these episodes more the second time 
I don't know why, but I always laugh more and cry more the second time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when they did the church thing, you thought it was cute. And then he's walking on the street. He sees the purple cross and uh, he goes into the church and he prays and he starts hearing the disco music. And what I loved about it is, you know, he just walked into faith. You know, Henri had been kicking his ass all night. Uh -huh, he <laughs> was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he walks into faith. Now, it was religious in that context, but I don't think that's what they were trying to say. I think he was just accepting, trying to be hopeful, and he knew that it was all about her. And then she's mm -hmm. just in the middle of all of it. I, I just thought that that was just a wonderful beeline. Beeline meaning a straight line, I guess. From, <laughs> yeah. Uh, from being on the street to suddenly being in there dancing with her, mm -hmm. and all the angles, all the dance, it was just fantastic. Yeah. It's quite the night. Well, I, how about that? How about that prayer too? Mm -hmm. long, long, long time, long time listener. <laughs> I love that part. Yeah, first time dollar. He got some good lines <laughs> off in this episode because yes. Ed usually has the singers, but. He got some really that was funny stuff. first time caller. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I bet you the the rest of the crew from the show, you know, the ones that got all the awards last night and such. Um, I bet you they just loved making that episode. Yeah. You know, they just know what a solid rock he is for the show. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then they just kind of let him have his moment. Mm -hmm. Um I I when I after I watched it the first time, I, I enjoyed it. I didn't have the same visceral reaction that I did to the others, but when I watched it the second time, it was just as visceral as the others. And I, I okay, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, did you guys notice the ELO music playing? I, really, I was oh going God. to tell you when, <laughs> um, when Tatsu mentioned that you know, him uh dancing and such. I mean, I don't know if anybody noticed, but. Uh, or one of y'all mentioned him getting back with Jane. And I thought that, you know, because I'm like, as I'm listening, the second time I watched it, I'm like, I know that song from somewhere. So I had to Shazam it. And then <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah, ELO. And I love the chorus, which to me, mm. that seemed like, I want to say it almost won't seem like a theme through the whole show, but towards the end, after he and Jane reunite the choruses, but I really want tonight to last forever. I really mm -hmm. want to be with you. And so that made me think of them. But yep. also the journey he was on, there's a verse that goes, underneath the starry sky, time was still, but ours must really have rushed by. I didn't realize, but love was in your eyes. And this made me think of the moment when they come face to face. Mm -hmm. He and Jane come face to face. It's ironic, though, because that song plays when he spots the seamstress. I don't know what her name, I can't remember what her name was. Oh. But mm. you think he's like going to hook up the with lady her. in red. Yeah. And as <laughs> I watch it, I'm like, this is like a cautionary tale for the dangers <laughs> of hooking up. Because what? <laughs> right. I'm like, okay, she wasn't a psycho, but uh, <laughs> he almost you know, got his ass kicked real good. <laughs> But the music choices were really good, as always. Oh, I mean, as always, yeah. As always, definitely. One of my favorite lines is he's uh, he's playing pool at the Golden Bones. What is it? I forget what the club honey. is. Bones and Honey. Or Bones and Honey. Bones and Honey. Bones and Honey. You got to say it with an attitude. Bones and yeah, you gotta you, you, can't move, <laughs> you can't move your teeth. Bones Even Cher couldn't get in. Exactly. <laughs> And he says, uh, he said, hey, how'd you know all that Oxford stuff? And he goes, I once dated a professor from Oxford and I listen more than I talk. I love that. That line. was the key line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it so true? Right. Well, yeah. Mine, but it wasn't my favorite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Tatsu, you haven't met me, but uh, Scott and Sister A can attest. I, 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 I like. Uh, I have a raunchy sense of humor at times. <laughs> <laughs> the more suggestive, the better. So is it any surprise, Scott and Sister A, my favorite line? Just like my legs after a date with a guy who kept correcting me were closed from me. <laughs> I love when she said that. I was like, I'm like, please let nobody else pick that. Please let nobody else pick that. That's gonna it's be all yours. Line. It's all yours. <laughs> when you watch yeah. that. 
when you watch that the second time, the guy, the, the, the one of the guys on the table says, oh, you're dating Ken. And he goes, it was two dates. <laughs> so he keeps we going. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love that guy. <laughs> oh my god it's funny you mentioned it because he was uh you said favorite character so uh i had to look it up his name i believe is paul i was kind of gonna go for hot henri you know because i love mm. the whole thing about even though yeah. i'm french you and i shouldn't mm -mm. say this you know but my favorite actually ended up being Paul. I love the Sharon impersonation. You know, do you believe? Yes, oh Paul is <laughs> so good. When he, when he burst into the song, it's so unexpected. And I just, the first time it made me laugh. And I, when I watched it the second time, when they're challenging, you know, the uh, college guys to game of pool and it's Paul's turn. He's counting out coins to finish rounding out what the 20 pounds. Yeah. Like 17, 18, 19, 20, trigonometry. <laughs> I just love it. When he, when he shows trigonometry. That, you know, trigonometry. Oh. You know. Yeah, he was my he was my favorite part. And then as when as the limo is driving off, he leans out of the window and he's singing something about gelato or whatever. I mean, he's yeah, the coronetto. It's like yeah. a, <laughs> a ice cream treat that they like over. That's England. exactly what it is. Yeah, right. wasn't yeah. there a? Com There's a commercial. I think he was singing the commercial, commercial or something. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think it was in the show, but it may have been. It, it just randomly pops up, right? Okay. No, yeah. that's hilarious. No, yeah. no, he's the one that's because when they meet. Uh, Coach Beard in the bar, he's the one that says, yeah, we thought you might need a hug. Need a hug. Well, I thought yeah, you need a hug. yeah. I love the inclusion of the three of them into yeah. this episode they because they've, so they've been really that. like rocks in that pub, you mm. know, and they're such great fans. And just their revelation at the end that Beard gives them was fantastic. So oh, I was really glad to have them included. Yeah, to get to know them better. Yeah, and I didn't pick up the first time. You know, he tells them to go to this address and, and ask for Renee. Or, mm -hmm. And I just didn't get it the first time that that was a code to get into the back door to be able to go. To yeah, the yeah. Pitch. Um, <laughs> and I at the second time, I, oh, that's so cool. He gave them a gift for taking care of it. it was yes. Look awesome. on their faces when yes. they realize where they are. I mean, Through this uh, tunnel. <laughs> this like yeah. this Igor or Igor kind of like guy mm -hmm. leading them through this, yes. this tunnel. But, what does he say? Turn them on or something? Yeah, I think he says hit the light. Like, kind of, <laughs> it was kind of a, what was the guy? Is it Marty Feldman, the late Marty Feldman? It, all he was missing was the hunch in his exactly, back. And, exactly, exactly. You know, That's what I was thinking. Yeah, mm -hmm. Frankenstein. Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, I got to watch that movie before Halloween. I, I have to admit, I'm a huge Mel Brooks fan. Oh, yeah. And I just haven't watched Young Frankenstein in so long. I'm not sure <laughs> I watched that. Uh, is that is that love or do I just have a problem? Why can't it be both? <laughs> yeah, both. Right. I, I love so that. Many line. great lines in that. Why episode. can't it be mm -hmm. both? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Does anybody else think that like this was like a Christmas Carol? Like the story, hmm. right? In Be Beard is Beard is Scrooge. Mm, yeah. Interesting. That is I, there because it was like. Like a little, like a little, like supernaturally streak going on, right? Yeah, and, and the way they know, were dressed and stuff. Yeah, oh, and like we kind of, and like you know, the three guys are like spirits, right? Mm. Like, um, oh. and the lay the lady in red, and like I, I, I feel like between like the church scene and the the, um, you know, Thierry Henry, uh coming in and out and like the the scene with the 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 tv screens and the, mm. the lava yeah, yeah. Stuff, mm -hmm. you know i was like oh like this is this is totally like a, a christmas carol thing like it's like a um it's like he's going through trials of yeah. you know how it's his version he, of yeah yeah right yeah. yeah that's an interesting idea i like it no, oh, I like your reference yeah. to the sort of supernatural element, right? I, the dreamlike qualities. I got a real David Lynch vibe out of it. Mm -hmm. um, and and then I guess the, 
um hold on here that that uh, what was the title of the episode then um after hours after hours it turns out there's a scorsese flick from 84 after hours called after After hours Hours. so a lot of people were saying yeah that Mm. was the reference um Uh i have to say i've never really seen seen scorsese do anything with supernatural elements that's Mm. why i went with uh with lynch but i i i like that kind of stuff i mean I like just letting the imagery and the sounds be poetic instead of having to clamp it down into a linear plot. And I just love the fact they gave him that space to to do that and have fun. All the be- all the right beats, no pun intended. But you know, when he starts dancing at that club, he didn't learn how to dance for that shot. He knew how to yeah. dance. He showed yeah. it to him, and they said, okay, "Yeah, we're holding that into I a got shot." <laughs> It's funny you mentioned Supernatural. Um, When I went online, because I wanted to try and find who the characters were instead of having to refer to guy in the green hat, Mm -hmm. big guy, you know, whatever, scrawny guy. So I I was scrolling, looking for something, and I ran across a couple articles. And so I'm deliberately, like, trying not to read them because I didn't want it to cloud my thoughts. Mm -hmm. But I happened Mm -hmm. to catch a glimpse. And uh, back to your reference about the Supernatural, did any of you all think his pants were magical? Because someone <laughs> mentioned his magic pants. Yeah. I love it. Magic and pants. I maybe on the third viewing I will get that. Because <laughs> what may help me make a lot of sense of it, because I was at the end, I was I enjoyed the dancing, I enjoyed him letting loose. But then I'm scratching my head going, but why is he back with Jane? But then when I went back, you have to actually, believe it or not, you have to, if you're quick enough to catch those texts, but there I was trying to freeze my uh-huh. energy, and I didn't realize, okay, the reason she sent him 52 texts and called him 72 times was she told him, I love you, and then was waiting mm, for him to no say response. Text. So I'm like, okay, it all makes sense now. I mean, I was scrolling, trying to read all of them, like saying, <laughs> nice it's not that I didn't want you I didn't want you to meet my mother because I was embarrassed of her. But you know what? I'm fucking embarrassed of you. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it, it was Mom. really. Oh, yeah. She she went off completely. Off. And that's dedication. I mean, come on. Mm. Had, but, you know, she's not the nicest person. That's, and that's what. Kind which of, is kind of strange that this whole name, relationship is. He's working is so Jane hard Payne. to keep it. <laughs> and her name Payne. is Jane, Jane Payne. Payne. Exactly. He, P A Y N E. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's the last like the name. movie. Because I thought her first name was Jane A Y N E. But maybe no. that's the thing. Love is pain, you know? Um, well, I get the magic pants, right? I Because that right after that, he jumps into a dumpster and comes out alive. Yeah. Because right? I think that know. was a pretty steep drop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that's never a good idea. Like him too. Yeah. No, yeah. He was him. wearing them the next day. Too. Yeah, probably. <laughs> when he was at the club. Mm-hmm. Yep, just props his feet up on the table. Yeah, like, you know, yeah. Just the regular. Did you notice how Teddy just looks back and like, all right, no, no biggie, no biggie. So when I watched that last scene the first time, I got a little irked at Ted because oh, everybody so. said we don't want to watch a game, and Ted makes him watch the game. And I was just just the fidelity of what I experienced it. The second time he says, yeah, but you got to watch the Benny Hill thing. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> At 10 times speed. <laughs> it's freaky. Great. The genius of this show. How, yeah. You know, and I, I tell people when I say, because, you know, I'm not those, maybe I'm a closet romantic, perhaps, whatever, you know, my, my <laughs> cynical, sarcastic veneer. Oh, and by sidebar, I enjoyed your comments about sarcasm, uh, Scott. Oh. So I'm in the previous um, podcast, and I'm going, oh, shit, I love sarcasm. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, <laughs> but um, when uh, I went back, you know, I'm watching it again. And when I watch the show, you know, I, I the, there's no other way to say it, but the show makes me happy. I don't know if that makes sense, but it yeah. makes you feel good. And I know people will say, oh, this is saccharine and like, you know, unrealistic, but anyway, well, you watch I, one of our podcasts. <laughs> yeah, we I, do have somebody like that oh, yeah. on the pod. I, I would love, I, I'd love to chat it up with him. <laughs> I would love to be able to chat it up with him. But, you know, in the beginning, I had my brow arched because I'm thinking, 
there's no way anybody can be this positive. And so my, I like how you come into the show with these perceptions and it just flips them yeah. on their, uh, on your, on its head. Cause I said, okay, well, is he Forrest Gump? Like, you know, so innocent mm. that that explains his positivity, yeah, well you know, mm -hmm. but it's like, no. And I said, well, you know, there are those people who, you know, just not even just are good, but you know, the glass is always half full. It's not mm -hmm. half empty. It's not vodka. It's water, you know, or something like that. But as you, whether it's how the stuff just aligns at the end, but th there's just something about it that's contagious. And maybe it's because, like you said, we're living through this crazy ass time and the pandemics. And it's, it's not, it, to me, it's just more than escapism. One, it's just so well written and so well acted. Mm. And it, it really, it's been a long time since there's been a show for me that was a joy to watch. You know, that may sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of corny, but the last time I enjoyed something this much was when I binged Frasier because that was like, mm -hmm. I don't know if it was at the height of the pandemic, but oh, you know, it was during leading up to last year's election. And so yeah, you know, everybody you. was on pins and needles and yeah. you came home, the news was talking about this and I was like, I can't do MSNBC no more. Yeah. I definitely don't do Fox. I said, I need something just to take my mind off. And so I it took me about three, almost four months tops to wow. watch Frasier because it's 11 seasons. Mm -hmm. But the great thing about it was I can't remember not laughing watching that show. Every episode made you laugh. Some, yeah, they were knee slappers and like, you know, you're about to pee your pants. <laughs> but there was never an episode that was not funny. And for me with Ted Lasso, every episode is good. And somehow, even when it kind of like, you know, just catches you off guard it leaves you feeling good and yeah man, leaves you feeling you understood yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah you know and i marvel at i'm like boy if somebody had the you know the the intuition or whatever to come up and i i'm impressed that somebody put this down on paper you know with these mm. these characters it's so clever Oh, very well, this oh, writing the... crew has definitely got its its thumb on the pulse of where mm -hmm. the culture is oh, yeah. right now it's oh, definitely got its thumb on the references it's yes. got its thumb on the pulse of, uh, dare I say, middle class white optimism. Uh, mm -hmm. It's really telling us a story about what that is. And um, so, it, you know, you're mentioning shows that you watch that make you happy. I'm going to admit, I hope it doesn't get me in trouble, mm -hmm. but my wife started watching Boston, Boston Legal. Is that what it is? James mm. Spader, right? Yeah, James oh, Spader. And Shatner. God, I love that show, but I feel so bad while oh, no, liking that great. show. So <laughs> Why? William Shatner, oh, what, a, was what it? a show to end your career on, man. I mean. <laughs> what an asshole. No. <laughs> <laughs> but anything with James Spader, I mean. Oh, I yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, he is yeah. good. That's a good show. Um, who's the one, the, the black guy, the lawyer who I don't know mm. if this is a spoiler, but he's a cross-dresser or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly. That just completely blew me away. But he, <laughs> he was an undercover brother. That's where I know him from. He okay. Was, uh, yeah, I never he watched was, Boston Legal. He was a conspiracy brother. He, he was smart brother. That's who he was. He was smart mm. brother. <laughs> <laughs> you got to check out Undercover Brother. It's hilarious. <laughs> really good movie. With the early I Dave Chappelle. That was oh, a yeah. great movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else got a favorite line, favorite scene, favorite character? Uh, favorite scene was them on the wait excuse me let me get it right on the pitch right is that what you call on the it? pitch yeah, the pitch. yes on the pitch. yeah i say by season three y'all may actually have me watching soccer come on Dude, careful oh, procrasti i don't know now. a lot about soccer but watching the show i'm like i kind of want to know more about, well i'm always <laughs> in <laughs> awe of the athleticism period oh yeah Ooh. i mean i'm lucky i can put one foot in front of the other okay so you know yeah soccer to... is top notch oh, uh, at really yeah. Yeah. just be it's careful which uh <laughs> which team you choose to uh support <laughs> okay so which one are you you are this is liverpool we are all actually liverpool the so three of us manchester united are they the bad guys never say any, anything about yeah. those guys yeah. the wrong kind of red though. they are yeah. yes the wrong kind of red Oh, so that's so. a good red hat you got on, okay? Because that's you know, a good red hat. When I see red hats, I, you know, I kind of. Oh, I know. Them. You could, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> oh, so this Liverpool, is the right one. 
What does that F stand F for? LFC? FC, football club. Oh, see, I, I was going to say Liverpool There you go. Club. I'll send you I a hat, for Crasty. Oh, hey, I'm going to hold you to it. Okay. And I will wear it when we okay. see each other again. Okay? All right. She's oh, in. She's playing. on with us. <laughs> they are playing amazing football this year. Yes. They're, they're being undersold by the critics, which I just love. Go ahead and celebrate. Yeah. Chelsea, go ahead. Hey, and we're at the top, y'all. So you know, whatever. I mean, we 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 won this week, and I don't think Alexander Trent Arnold was in there. Who no. did, didn't they have Milner that, playing? That was a that they was had a completely different. The weirdest lineup. They never they never played together. The James weirdest Miller, lineup. 30, 36? Whatever. Yeah, 36 years love old. me some Milner. Oh so, my God. Still running about 11K a game. Exactly. More than anybody. <laughs> and you guys, it's it seems team. like Yago's uh, more aggressive up front this season. Yeah. Like he's trying to Yago, he's, he's playing smarter. Right? Yeah. He's, he's, uh, he's, he's figuring it out because last year, his whole issue was he was just going in for, he was, he's Roy Kenting it, you know? <laughs> uh, and he needed, to be, he needed to be more like Roy Kent. He's there. He's everywhere. No, I was glad to see him get an Emmy. But uh oh, that, oh, he's that the best. Role. Yeah, Isn't he was that, wasn't really... that hilarious? Wasn't it hilarious that like pretty much the entire like supporting actors in a in a, yeah. um, a comedy show was all of them? <laughs> yeah, so that's why I was worried. I thought they were all going to cancel each other out because that's how it usually works with the mm. Oscars. You know, that mm. when I saw one person, that I'm like, wait, this is like three quarters of the main, you know, ensemble. And I wanted him to win. Uh, I think his name is Bert Goldstein or Brett. Brett. Brett yeah. mm -hmm. and, uh, and when they called his name, I was like, well, and I was so happy that, uh, is it Hannah Waddingham? Yep. Which my mind is blown yeah. that that is the nun. From I Shame. know, I know, right? Shame. Who who knows they were hiding that amazing frame? Oh, wow. Underneath. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Me. Oh, you didn't know Tatsu. I didn't. I, yes. I never made that connection. Wow. I was Giant woman. Her. You know, exactly. Sister Just like you, Procrasty, and me. That. Exactly. Wow. To be able to look a woman in the eye. Tall lasses. Nope. <laughs> I'll yeah, wait for those. Knew? Amazing. And yeah. is that her singing too? Can she really sing? I think God so. Knows. Yeah. 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 yeah that's her. Surprises. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> she didn't sing when she said shame, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, the mountain a, got her in the end, remember? This is a, this is a funny thing. When when um she was singing uh Let It Go in the karaoke scene in the the first season, apparently they she re-recorded that, right? So like they had recorded a lot of that season before the pandemic. And when they were going to cut it, she's like, "Oh, I don't, I don't like that." And so she recorded that in her closet or something like that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to ask you guys, what do you think? Does this episode of um, Coach Beard does it does it uh, foreshadow things to come? Do do we, in other words, instead of just him maybe falling in love and and them like back together? Uh, is there something else that this foreshadows? And it's not like I have an answer. Or do you it's, think this was just let's exp let's explore beard for a while? It's I've heard well people some people referring to it as the psychedelic episode, like you know, yeah. tripping on acid or mm -hmm. something. But when I was making my notes and you said you know favorite character, favorite scene, and then you said theme and. I, I just did like, you know, the whole first thing that comes to your mind. And the first word that popped into my mind was doubt. And I wrote that down with a question mark. So I'm like, yeah. doubt. but then I, I think I went there because, and this ties into your question about foreshadowing when he you know, comes on in terms of the telly, as they say, and he, um, he, the sports center is on. And it took me a couple minutes before I realized, oh, wait, they're, you know, was it breaking the fourth wall? Or they're talking to him mm -hmm. because I just thought it was, you know, the sports cast. And so as I'm listening to it, I realized, okay, the commentary from the analysts, they basically, they're really Beard's thoughts 
about his decisions for the game and also about himself. He obviously, in retrospect, was doubting himself, you know, because what May yeah. pointed it out to him, uh, was it Henri, and I don't remember the other uh, sportcaster's name. Yeah, Lineker. But they, yeah, they both said, you know, yeah. was it uh, he, uh, Richmond had no plan, Beard uh, mm. knew an aggressive strategy was mistaken. Those, there were three things that I thought that really were Beard just, you know, basically he was thinking those things they were just like uh basically not him beating himself over the head but it's like yeah that's what he really felt he felt mm. uh that a, an aggressive uh strategy was a mistake that he should have challenged Ted uh and then the, the other two come in with I think his self down and sadly for some reason I guess his opinion of himself uh not be a sniveling lackey and that he's a sad single Ouch. man, which that made me sad because I was like, I, I, if he views himself as way, mm-hmm. I mean, I think he's rather brilliant and he's a sharp coach, but it could be because I've been listening to what y'all were talking about in the previous episodes, and again, I'm only up to three, but it is interesting, it's, it's fun to watch listen to the podcast after after you've already watched <laughs> yeah. the episode. So everybody's talking about. Oh, I hope they don't put Ted and Rebecca together. And then, you know, that big <laughs> twist that it turned out. Oh, no, they didn't do that. Because no. I didn't see that coming. No. But no. I'm wondering if there is going to be some type of, I don't know, friction between Ted and um, Ted and Beer. Um, well, but- listening to you talk there, um, see, Coach isn't the guy that brings the family together. Ted does that. So mm-hmm. even if things go poorly for Ted, he's got a family. And I think that's how the season's going to end for him, right? Mm-hmm. People are going to take care of him, the whole wonderful life thing. But Beard mm-hmm. doesn't create the family. He does the tactics. And, you know, interestingly enough, when he was walking away, there were two or three times when he tried to get Ted to come with him. Uh. And Ted said, no, I got to. And what Mm. Beard is saying is, I need a little family to myself. You know, I need some help, too. And uh, Ted let him go. And, you know, I've been thinking the bad thing might happen. Some carbonite might come to Ted. (laughs) I loved your Star Wars reference. You love Star Wars. It's about the Star Wars. And someone's going to say, I love you. And someone else is going to say, I know. I know. That's how this (laughs) is going to (laughs) end. Well, Beard, I mean, Beard is he's becoming Han Solo, right? Like, yeah. he totally is. Absolutely. Um, it's interesting because, like, this episode we figure out he cares a lot more about what people think than he leaves mm-hmm. on, right? Mm-hmm. Which, which is like, usually the case with folks. Right, true. You mm-hmm. know, put, put up that, which, you know, front. Just yeah. Front. Which is like, Even you know, who, know, who knows if it, if it comes out, you know, to the extent it did in this episode, but at least we know now like you know what what he's thinking when he just kind of like shuts up and you know is, is uh you know staring giving you the death stare so <laughs> yeah but then it, that, that was kind of uncomfortable him with a little girl on the train but i think he caught himself realizing that oh i'm like, doing oh, the scary guy that. thing <laughs> yeah know? and he, he can't was, do roy kent roy kent could have got away with that right, right. he would have right. found a way uh, to it, but <laughs> You know, he's an American. We don't stare at little kids and growl on the train, you know. (laughs) We better not. Did you notice? Did you notice that fast forward scene? He blinked maybe four times, and that was probably like 20 minutes. (laughs) So do you do you think they filmed that continuously with blips or do you think think they did? No. I thought it looked like because I was looking at that too, and it looked like he was kind of in regular time. To me, yeah. like it was a cut, and then the rest of it was happening very fast. Maybe he did that Peter Gabriel uh, sledgehammer thing, yeah. where he just. Moved uh, but I only very saw it once. And, yeah. You know, they, they while a lot of things were moving quickly, that would yeah. be fun. Yeah. It was interesting. So why do you think he? Because remember at the at the end of episode eight, which they, you know, started off nine with. When he, what does he say? He goes, nah, I just need, I don't know if you said, but I need to go shake this off or something. So he, you think he wanted to get out of his head or 
But you well, he's the one that his he's the one responsible for the tactics. Even you know, um, uh, Nate and uh, Roy, you know, they well, yeah, because he does map it out, yeah. But he's true. the dude, and and the loss was tactical. Yeah. I mean, poor May wouldn't even let him off the hook. Oh, you know, no. she's what great. Did you start? What, that is what, what Are you serious? No. So maybe he goes for it. Maybe this is tying into the foreshadowing you all are talking about that. But see, but, but why would he be pissed at Ted? Like you said, if he is the brains or whatever, if he's the, what do you call it? Uh, not statistician, but uh, strategist. If he's the yeah. strategist, and he's putting forth information, Ted either chooses to use it or not. Ted went with his suggestions, but I'm thinking since you all are talking about perhaps there's some type of tension or conflict building between them, is it perhaps that Beard went off by himself because like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what? I need to get away from you because if I don't, I'm going to say something I regret, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Do you think, think he... I think he's a, this happens to people who aren't the front man, but do all the work, right? Uh, mm -hmm. The people that do all the work when they don't get their props and, mm -hmm. you know, the front man's getting props, even though it was a crappy gig, um, that hurts. And then when the front man doesn't take you out for a beer by yourself later. Yeah, he's feeling you know alone. How dependent they are. You start getting jealous, isn't the word, envious. You start, get, you feel a little betrayed and, and, you know, he actually would have taken Ted with him because he's sitting like Ted kept saying, hey, coach, and he turned turn around wide eyed like, you're going to come with me, you know, with me, you know, and uh, Ted kept, I don't know that Ted even knew he was blowing him off, which was, yeah, I don't know. I, I wasn't totally comfortable that with that writing. See, I thought Ted was asking to go with him and he said, nah, I just want to be by myself. Or am I reading the scene wrong? We're, we're talking no, about no, no. beginning of nine, right? Coach Beard said, I don't want to go back with you guys. I want to go walk this off. Uh -huh. And then he said to Ted, you want to come with? Oh, see, yeah, I missed that part. Yeah, okay. And, yeah, so, um, which was a call, a call for help. Yeah. You know, but Ted brother, didn't. The, you know, the rhythm guitar sucked tonight. And I'm sorry, I got to keep it down. But you need to take me out and buy me a beer. And he didn't. So. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. This should be interesting. This Any be other uh, burning issues about this episode you haven't had a chance to talk about yet? Uh, uh no. Uh, thing I noticed because uh, I'm that nerd. Anybody else think that Jeremy, he was the part of the bar trio, he was the one that had on the green hat? As I'm watching, I'm like, I'm like, is this Beck? in like a in a cameo <laughs> mm. he looks like beck remember he does he does see and so it's not just me because i'm like going know. like he looks like beck but I look one of them look like dwight yoakam to me the middle one the, okay the scrawny one. <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. scrawny one. and, and when they when they came walking out of the pub in those clothes dressed for the night, I said, oh, yeah. I so want to dress right. like that and go out. Don't you love how Paul just throws, throws back scarf. his scarf? Yeah, I was just going to say yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, do it, and man. the scene where they trick, um, was it Sarah Coons? Is that her yeah. name? Yes. <laughs> they trick her into coming out of the uh, bar. And what's his face? Uh, Beard. He's <laughs> doing this thing. And... Paul is in front of him. The first time I saw it, I'm like, are they mimicking a couple making out? Because he goes, look cool or something. And I'm like, yeah, y'all yeah, look anything but right now. Oh, God. But that was Crazy. a pretty cool prank that they pulled. And I love how he, um, which, not so much foreshadowing, but is there some type of subtext there when uh, Beard tells the other three guys, because I think Paul said, oh, I feel bad for Sarah Combs, you know? Mm -hmm. And then Beard says, no, she's uh, something about how she is going to, uh, she's going to, tomorrow's going to be the best day of her life. Yeah. Her, oh, because of her apartment not being on it fire. It won't be on fire. <laughs> yeah, kind of like you're going to appreciate, you know, how you appreciate what you thought. Oh, look at that. How you appreciate what you thought you lost, mm -hmm. but you still have. Look at all the they're laying in there. Yeah, that, experiencing joy through end. lowered expectations. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the scene with the cell phone when it's like, you know, uh, shut up. No, 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 no
I that loved the, the big guy taken off on his scooter. <laughs> yes. I kept After all that. Dave Bautista or something. I'm like, exactly. He was, he was kind of like a, uh, a like gigantic version of, uh, what's his face? Roy like, Kent. Yeah. That's Ooh, what I thought yeah. too. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and I love man. that he's the one. He gives him, he gives him his wallet. He forgot these. And then they're walking mm. away. And just as they're about to split, he says, oh, you forgot these, drop these, and it's his keys. The keys right? kept coming up, or right? I'm thinking, okay, or listen to the Eagles, you know. Book? So so oftentimes yeah. it happens that we live our lives in chains and we never really know we have the key, right? And I was wondering, I'm like, am I missing something? Because the key has, has got to be something about the key, you know. Three times he loses he the key. It, and then he breaks it off. And then the he door. breaks it. Yeah. So if Carrie were here, she'd be talking about doors, right? Remember <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where is she tonight? We need that help. She's still counting the number of keys ever. Yeah. You know, but maybe that um, kind of loops into Tatsu's idea about the Dickens oh, yes. with the three, the three people and the three times he loses the keys yeah, and stuff. So, future, yeah. yeah. A Christmas Carol written by Martin Scorsese. <laughs> right. <then>. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. All right. Any other uh, lines, comments, characters? Uh, another good line. I picked a couple in case somebody had, had the ones that I was interested in. Um, mm. What oh, was it? What exposed ours to bring down the monarchy? Monarchy itself. <laughs> How dare you speak of Prince Andrew that way? <laughs> I was like, ooh, <laughs> like, sing. Sorry, yeah. yeah. My runner up for my favorite line, though, uh, uh, is if I somebody had picked Maze, I was going to go with Paul's uh, question to uh, Beer. How do you cope knowing the universe is infinite, but your consciousness could end at any second? <laughs> I like that. I love how they come back and you don't know how much time has passed. Yeah. And Beer says, so on that note, <laughs> they're right. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. <laughs> I've been to Vegas many times. <laughs> One night is good. Two is great. <laughs> Three is too many. Too many. <laughs> and he's absolutely right, by the way. Yeah. Three yeah. nights in Vegas is a little much. I think three's yeah. okay. He tapped out. Yeah, right, Procrasty? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I like that. I thought I said, we did more than three days. We did more than three. Uh, I like the, the line it. at the end with Ted and the... Um, the group uh, waiting for him to come in, waiting for Beard to show up. And he says, don't worry, Beard is like a mailman. He always delivers and he looks great in shorts. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I think about this episode is it doesn't, because it was more of a dreamlike sequence, right? It just didn't have all the narrative edges that mm -hmm. your, you know, your usual episodes do to come in. And so for this one, you just eat it like a bowl of ice cream and but um, it's not the same kind of story, right? Uh, yeah. Oh, but that moved that along. Ooh, that moved that along. No, mm -hmm. it didn't do that. They took a little um, little afternoon nap. Yeah, I think then that, that was similar to the the Christmas episode too. Yeah, absolutely. it kind of just took a break from moving anything forward, like you said, and just gave us a good time or well, when something I to enjoy. This... Go ahead, Tatsu. Something, I mean, something, it's like the Christmas episode in that something big is, is coming after this. Yes. You can't, yeah, you can't, you can't just lose a, lose a big game like that and not have any. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. The last and three episodes will be something else. They are, they've implied that there is a death that we, uh, they go to a funeral or something in the next episode. Any guesses? Oh, really? Oh, uh, uh, what's his face? Somebody's uh, dad or something, or no? The who's the villain? Um, Roy, not Roy. No, Rebecca, Rebecca's Trump? ex. ex oh, and sir, what is his name? I know who you're talking about. Um, but yeah, I can't remember his name at the moment. Rupert. 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 Yeah. yeah. Well, you think he's gonna are... die? No. Mm, I don't know. Well, maybe it's one of her parents. I think. I'll be surprised. Her Maybe mom. Jamie Tart's dad dies. No, they're gonna oh. keep him around for a while. What a dick. 
Like I said, I, I haven't caught, I haven't listened to all of your podcasts, but I was wondering at some point, have you all discussed, and again, maybe it's just, you know, the world we currently live in, or it could be the brand of TV that's been around for a while, you know, that whole, that need to shock, like, you know, you're just, you're mm. just bouncing along and then, you know, to me, it's the ER effect. I, I loved ER, but I hated watching it because somewhere by the end, there was always something horrific mm -hmm. that happened, you know, and, you know, the, uh, they'll do that on a lot of shows, like, you know, the out of left field, this happens, you know, well, I mean, Game of Thrones did it. Game of Thrones, us, you know, yeah. You, mm -hmm. you would think we'd be immune to it, but mm -hmm. that was, it kind of fit with that show, you know, a, after the first you know, season you learn, yeah. don't, you know, don't get your hopes up. But when I was watching, because <laughs> I binged the first season, I finished it in one day. So then I started watching wow. two. And the episode, I think it's the Christmas episode. Which one does Roy go to the stadium? He decides, hey, this isn't for me doing the uh, broadcasting. I'm going to coach, do what I meant to do. Maybe that was seven. That wasn't the Christmas episode. After the Christmas, I think it was I seven. Think. So when he, he's Six leaving nine. the He's leaving the studio, right? And I'm on pins and needles because because how TV is, you know, everything's going great. I'm like, they're just going to blindside us. He's going to get hit mm. by a truck. Mm. But when he's in the cab, and they're, I'm like, oh, God, they're going to get a truck. <laughs> you know, I'm just going. And I was holding my breath until he got to the stadium. And I said, when he's yeah. in the stairs, I'm like, oh, God, he's going to break his neck falling down the stairs. I just knew it. I just knew it. So. All that circle in the airport to say the scene with Beard and Jamie's piece of shit dad, really mm. good acting by that guy because I hated uh, him. Yeah, yeah. Where, you know, they're working Beard over and then the guy picks up the pipe and I'm like, oh my yeah. God, are they yeah. going? I really thought they were going to pull uh, um, Opie from mm. uh, Sons, of, Sons of Anarchy from mm. the right. aptly tied the laying pipe episode, you know? I went, oh God, because I said, you know what? Nobody would see this coming, and it would kind of be that jolt. It reminds me of, I haven't watched Scrubs back to back, but I've seen episodes of it, and everybody talks about, you know, the show was hilarious, and then they had the one episode where that the nurse, you, yeah, yeah mm. you know, they, they just, and I'm like, are they going to scrub me right about now? Because I thought <laughs> that's what was going to happen with the dad, you know, but mm. so thankfully, you know, big guy comes in, but yeah. uh, in the back of my mind, I'm wondering, are they, is there this moment they're going to pull the rug out from others? I don't think they will, but I think they sucked everybody in with, you know, the happy and the yes, jovial and I love how they are breaking him down, just, mm. yeah. you know, deconstructing him, and I think, personally, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I don't think the team's ever going to win. I think the... yeah. I think the process is just to show the evolution of the people on the team. Yeah, it would have mm -hmm. been great if they won in season one, but then where do you go after that? And then so I'm like, we got season two. Are they going to win? Or if they do, I don't want them to turn into, is his name Nate? Good acting by that yeah, guy. Nate, I yeah, Nate. I hate no, him Nate's, right now. Nate yeah. is Annika Skywalker. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, I love how you <laughs> no, that was Montine. Montine called him out as Anakas. Yeah. Um, and he's well, uh, uh, Anakas are um, um, now I, I had the name and all the guy who betrays Han Solo. Oh, Calrissian, Lando. Arisen, yeah, because uh, you're right. Yeah. They're going to continue to lose. I think I don't, they, they're going to be in a threat of being relegated again. Yeah. Again. What does relegated mean in soccer? What does that mean? Move down to Demoted. another division. The next. Oh, okay. So you know, drop you know, a division. Right. Yeah. And oh. I think they're going to have to trade players. And I think they're going to trade Sam that. because mm -hmm. of yeah. the problems he created. And that's going to put Rebecca in a crap spot. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe she gets frozen in the carbonite of love. I have no idea. <laughs> but, but, uh, <laughs> She goes into the trash compactor. Oh, exactly. Or, does she, end, or <laughs> she may end up a slave to Rupert, a.k.a. Job of the Hut. There you because go. Because you all were talking about the... Um, Job of the Hut, of the, course. The ownership of the team, you know. Yeah. You know, it, would be, it would be too obvious to make the new white. Job of the Hut. I think... <laughs> so I think he's Rupert, like, yes! He's yes, going to worm his way back in there. Well, I, then I Rupert think, can't... 
Rupert can't die because you know I Return of the Jedi of begins on Antwi with uh, with uh, I mean, Jabba the Hutt, man. When they're retrieving, it. yeah. She would have gone black to Rupert's funeral. She would probably show up in line green with a marching band, or, <laughs> you know, something dancing on a grave. Unless you know it hits her harder than she expected. Because I mean, did they ever say how long she and Rupert were married? Yeah. Right, what, were gonna, what were you gonna what were you gonna say, Tatsu? I was just gonna say, help me, Obi Wan. You're my only hope. And Obi <laughs> Ted, Ted is Ted is Ted is Obi Wan, right? So he's not he's not actually the savior, though. No. So no. it all fits. It all fits. But who's Luke then? If Ted is Obi Wan, who's Luke? Well, Are who, we no Beard. Luke? Well, we thought Beard was Obi Wan. Obi Wan. Right? He's the tall oh, really? Yoda. He's, he's the tall Chewbacca? Yoda. Then he might be Chewbacca. Roy's Chewbacca with all that hair. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I so, hey. He's also very lovable, so. Oh, exactly. I guess, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. thinking he's Han Solo, maybe, you know, Roy. Kind of gruff, but mm. there's, ah. there's a heart underneath there. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, well, Tom Keely like, brings it out. Yeah. Who were you thinking was Han Solo? Tatsu? I thought, well, actually, originally I was thinking uh, Beard was Han Solo. Mm. But, oh. yeah, I guess, you know. Well, we'll have to have a game and we'll have to sort that out. Uh, I do this this other podcast where we play a game at the beginning. So I think for the last one here, I'll, uh, mm. we'll, play, we'll play a little game at the beginning. Okay. Kind of like, yeah, just everybody, to, everybody messed. Yeah. Okay. Well, we I give you some kind of what if thing. You write an answer, and then what happens is I read the answers, and you all try to guess who wrote which answer. Right? Oh, so, I see. Yeah, well, now you got me very curious. So, who the hell is Darth Vader? Uh, uh, Nate is not Darth well, Vader. Well, Anakin pop- is young exactly. Vader, right? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Oh, do you do you think that? Yeah. Do you think Nate is going to like like sabotage? Yeah. The team in some way in the very it's, end, or sell them out to Rupert, or I was going to say, is he going to go to the dark side? Go to the competition? Yeah, but obviously, Nate is. What do you call? It? Is it projecting? It, he's treating that kid. And and for a minute he treated Kyle. Obviously, this is giving us a glimpse into Nate's relationship with his father because yeah. his father obviously treats him like crap, and you yeah. know Nate let it build up. But the real Nate came out when he was reading everybody, you know, and uh, Ted told him, "No, no, no, I'm not going to tell him this. You do." And you know, first he was hesitant, then he got into a groove, and then he's just like flinging it left, yeah, right and center, you know. I was well, waiting for somebody to go, all right, honey, come on back. Reel it back in, boy. Well, that's but, the thing. Not everybody can be Roy Kent, right? Not everybody has that love underneath that that makes the gruffness a role mm-hmm. uh, as versus an assault. And, you know, we had to learn that about Roy. Um, but by the way, man, Facebook either loves or hates this episode. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I can't believe how many people have come out and said, ugh. How many people? It takes multiple say, I viewings, I think, to appreciate. Because I'll be honest, because you know we were just rolling along and we were seeing everybody. When I saw, at the, I'm like, oh, it's beard centric. Nothing against beard, I like it, but I'm like, and then I and my watch, I'm like, just longer than usual. I think the episode was either 43 or 40. It was there. longer. I noticed was, that too. I was like, what's well, dragging one, on? <laughs> this one and eight, they were like 43 yeah. minutes or so, mm-hmm. and I was like, mm. but. You know, you step back and you watch it again. I, yeah. I, I think it. You know, is it the best episode? No, but it's by no means. You know, bad. Yeah. It, was, it was just different. And yeah. I it wasn't my favorite. Like, uh, yeah, and I actually really didn't different. watch this one twice. Mm. Yeah. I didn't I watch I it, it again. Twice so I could read the text. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you can read the text. Yeah. Have, think about it though. The genius of the show again. What is it? You know. Beard is front and center, but what do you find? At least when I went and watched again, it's the supporting or peripheral characters that yeah. I ended up picking up on. I mean, how ironic! Mm-hmm. He's the center of the show, and once again, like how you were talking, he's overshadowed by those you know around him or whatever. 
and it's not, I don't think it's anything any doing of uh, the actor or no. of the character, I, but I think they may have even designed it, you know, that way. Man, I think we're going to, what's going to happen to us, I think, is that we're never going to be able to watch Beard the same way again. Right. True. In other words, we got this was just what's in Beard's head 24 seven. And uh, these are the things that are in his mind as Tim's Ted's doing all of his blocky, 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 block Beard sitting there with all this. Right. Yeah, I, know. Well, um, mm-hmm. yeah. I think it's going to prove to be a necessary episode to understand the end of the season. I'm yeah. not sure what that'll be, but I mm-hmm. think it'll be important that we saw this. I was going to say being John Malkovich, but maybe it's that one with Jim Carrey and uh, Kate Winslet. Spotless I mind. Didn't see it. Yeah, don't they like go in and, well, maybe it's John Malkovich. Basically, you're inside someone's yeah. head. Seeing it's being how, John Malkovich. How, yeah. how it works. But I think the saving grace, at least to me, was the end of the episode. And hopefully people got it where he just freed himself. You know, because when you know, he takes off the, he unzips the jacket, you know, first you're like, he's just doing the basic thing, you know, you know, trying, guy who can't dance. And then, like you said, the beat drops and he gets into it. And to me, it was like, there's just like, you know, because at that point, he doesn't know Jane is there. Mm, yeah. You know, he, yeah. Just, he's, he just figures, you know, this has been, well, yeah, it was the end of a crappy day because you lost the game, nearly got, then, you nearly got killed. Easy. When mm-hmm. he's back in the office with the guys, you really feel like you've woken up in the morning. Mm-hmm. And Ted says, let's all do this. And he just kind of turns away. And yeah. what, what's he probably doing? He's probably right back in that world we just saw, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. all before then, because this this isn't a space for him. He's he's not ready to joke about that loss yet because uh, mm-hmm. it hurt uh, him too much. Yeah. That's all right then. That way. I didn't think that about the loss affecting him. I, I didn't hear that. Would you say that I again? Th- I didn't think of it that way about the loss affecting him. That deep. I'm glad y'all pointed out that hey, he kind of like him. Oh. I don't know if the nuts and bolts of the team because he's the brain. You know, yeah. Ted is a charm. You know, yeah. You know, Ted, you know, he gets like you say, he gets to go out. And, it's like good parent, bad parent. You know, he he's the one that everybody wants to be. I want to mm-hmm. be their friend. You know, and mm-hmm. there's beer like yeah, but I got to be the parent. I got to tell them no you know you can't do this no you can't wear that and it, it draws me back to what you brought up in a podcast how when beard i don't know if he snaps at tab and he tells them winning is important that these winning guys is, does matter yeah. They, yeah it does matter they want to win so yeah i tell you what man if you're ever in the opera if you're ever in the wonderful position to be a front man sorry the sexism was just a phrase and have a really good support person you got to love that person, man. You got to let them know yeah. every day mm-hmm. that you know appreciate them. that yep. your success completely depends on them. And you're taking, you got to promise to take them with you too. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you can't just let them go. Otherwise, you know, you're not, I think people like Nate, his head would get too big and he was, he would think it was all about him. Yeah. And you know, Ted played around with that a little bit here. Cause he, I'm just, wait a minute. Ted would pick up on this. Ted would say, okay, yeah, I'll go out. But he didn't that's maybe he's really preoccupied with you know stripping away his own demons mm. you know? and taking care of the that's team kind of yeah, yeah right. the, he needed to be with the team at yeah. that time you're right you're right yeah okay yeah. well it, it uh, was a crushing loss. yeah well uh, that about wraps it up for tonight's episode huh so thanks so much for tuning in lasso crew members please tell the audience where they can find you on social media and we shall start with sister a uh you can find me on twitter at underscore sister a Fantastic. How about you, Tatsu? Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Tatsushi, T A T S U S H I 1892. Is that the year Liverpool was founded? Correct. Woo-hoo! Okay. Right. Well, clever. <laughs> Love it. I'm just saying. And uh, <laughs> Procrastino, thanks so much for joining us this evening. We absolutely enjoyed your comments and insights. So, where can we find you on social media? You can find me on Twitter at isn't she lovely? I-S-I-N, she lovely. Fantastic. You can find me on Twitter at dark underscore loops. You can find all episodes of The Lasso Crew with the Dark Loops Productions channel on YouTube. If you'd like to leave feedback about this podcast, please leave it below on this YouTube page or send a message to darkloopsproductions at gmail.com. 
and we'll be sure to read it at the end of our next podcast. So there it is. From all of us to all of you, big hugs. And remember, football, football is, is life. life.